Hello everybody, this is Marcus Lundwall. I am here to present our talk on laboratory-based hard X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, which we prepared for the APS March meeting. Uh, and uh, welcome to this web alternative. Before going into some application examples, I'd like to start this talk off with introducing the Hackspace Lab which is actually the only photoelectron spectroscopy home lab system optimized for HACSPES using gallium excitation energy. And this allows for probing depths of up to 50 nanometers and even beyond. This uh, system solution enables scientists to study true material bulk and interface properties in, for example, battery and semiconductor research. Uh, the Hackspes lab can be a standalone system, as seen in this photograph, or it can easily be integrated into a larger platform consisting of several analysis and growth tools. The Hackspes lab is furthermore a convenient way to extend the available hours of Hackspes in the world. Uh, as uh, you may know, the beam lines the Hackspace beam lines around the world are heavily overbooked, and uh, this Hackspace lab can be available in the lab 24 hours, seven days a week. And uh, with the high intensity, actually about 10 times the intensity of uh, the competition, uh, this hard X ray XPS system uh, can produce some very impressive results, which I look forward to showing you now. HACSPES is a valuable technique for a variety of studies. Some key applications include buried interfaces, real-world samples, since one can see right through surface contaminations due to the large probing depth. Also for inoperando devices, HACSPES is proving increasingly important. On this slide, we present work from Mendes and co-workers. They have made measurements at uh, the Synchrotron Soleil, uh, actually using the same model of the EW4000 Hackspace analyzer, uh, as is found in the Hackspace lab. They study solid state electronic properties by utilizing Hackspace. The large mean free path, which of course gives the large probing depth, allows them to probe right through a 15 nanometer electrode in a conductive bridge memory sample and study the chemistry of resistivity changes underneath the electrode as a function of applied bias. This type of in operando studies are also possible to make with the Huxbus lab. Uh, the manipulator allows for biasing the sample and even adding additional contacts to the sample stage. In order to realize such measurements, one of course needs an efficient, high intensity and low noise system. Uh, in this graph, measurement times from the Huxbus lab and one of the best undulator Huxbus beamlines in the world, the BL46XU at Spring 8, are compared. Uh, so Nishihara and co-workers from Meiji University in Japan show that it takes only about 11 times longer to achieve comparable data with the Huxbus lab as from the beamline. In this paper by the Piper group, they study the influence of aluminum in layered oxide cathodes. <clears throat> the 9 kV data was measured during a Huxbus lab demo visit to the Sienta Omicron factory in Germany. When studying sensitive systems, such as often batteries, Sample introduction becomes critical. In this example on the left, we show the Huxbus lab with an attached glove box to the load lock. In these proof of principle studies, we illustrate the large probing depth resulting of the 9 kV X-rays. In the upper left graph, we see a silicon sample with native silicon oxide layer and a strong elemental silicon bulk signal. The upper right graph 
proves that one can resolve the silicon bulk signal even through a 50 nanometer silicon oxide layer. The probing depth is of course material dependent and uh, in the lower example uh, Boyan et al. from the University of Hasselt and IMEC uh, used their Hackspace lab to show that a gold signal is still distinguishable through a 100 nanometer organic semiconductor layer proving the phenomenal information penetration depth of this uh, instrument. Here is another example from Regut and co-workers here on the left. We uh, see this complex oxide transistor stack, which has been studied using the Hackspace lab. Device stacks similar to this one are used in the development of transparent electronics. Uh, the data shows that all layers are clearly resolved, including the aluminum electrode, which is 23 nanometers below the surface. And they all have good statistics. Acquisition times range from uh, two to four hours per spectrum, which uh, is still a manageable time for a difficult measurement. So this uh, shows that the results from Mendes et al. Uh, a reminder is shown here on the right, uh, would certainly be possible to achieve also with the Huxpas lab. Uh, the Huxpas lab sample stage is shown here on a photo, including the contacts and biasing. So this concludes what uh, I wanted to present on the Huxpas lab, and uh, we move to the next topic, which is the bar XPS system an ambient pressure Huxpa system designed for studies uh, with um, surrounding pressures of well above one bar. In this slide, we emphasize the need for precision. Uh, on the left, we have a platinum uh, sample with a carbon layer surface. And uh, in the lower left graphs, we see that a small geometry change from one degree grazing incidence of the light to the sample to 0.5 degrees makes the carbon 1s peak shoot up. This means that the surface contribution is really enhanced by this small geometrical change. Uh, it also shows that we can really study surface, uh, the surface layer and surface reactions using Huxpes. And uh, another advantage then of Having Huxpes for this is that the mean free path of the electrons uh, is very long, uh, which means that we can introduce a uh, high local pressure surrounding the um, uh, sample and still be able to get the electrons into our analyzer without scattering on the way. And speaking of high pressure, here is the basic principle of our bar XPS system, which is the virtual gas cell. On the left, you see the front cone of the analyzer with the built-in gas inlet system. And um, the middle graph shows that uh, when keeping a steady gas flow uh, and moving the sample closer and closer to the front cone, eventually a local high pressure is built up between the sample and front cone. Uh, on the right, you see that if we do this and uh, have an inflow of 4 liters per minute and uh, shrink the gap between sample and front cone to 30 microns, then we'll achieve a local pressure of above 1 bar at the sample and at the same time keep a pressure in the surrounding chamber of only 9 millibars. This means that we can uh, build a system using normal UHV uh, equipment and pumps and viewports without uh, any danger <clears throat> and with full function. Another advantage of the virtual gas cell uh, is that it keeps the sample clean. Uh, in the figure to the left, we see uh, a couple of red arrows showing that the uh, gas flow is uh, to the sample and then away from the sample. So any contaminations from the chamber walls or so will be 
sort of washed away by the gas and kept away from the sample. So the only contaminations uh, that would would be an issue would be um, contaminations introduced by the gas itself. To conclude, uh, we'd like to show a spectrum showing that the um, uh, bar XPS system is really a fantastic combination of Huxpes and ambient pressure. Uh, here we see a rhodium 3D spectrum uh, measured at 3.7 keV photon energy and uh, two bars of uh, helium pressure surrounding the sample or at the sample position. Uh, Nice statistics and uh, acquired in only a few minutes. This work uh, is done by Peter Amann and Anders Nilsson uh, of the University of Stockholm. Uh, it's done at uh, the Petra Synchrotron in Hamburg uh, at the Polaris end station, developed by Peter Amann and Anders Nilsson. Thank you for your attention. We'd like to um, uh, highlight all the contributors to this uh, talk uh, with Anna Regutz, uh, Imperial College London and UCL, uh, the Boyan Group, University of Hasselt, and uh, Professor Ugura et al. at uh, Meiji University, and of course, uh, Louis Piper at uh, Binghamton. Uh, thank you all very much for your attention.